This is one of the most important images in biology because it helped us to figure out that DNA had a helical structure. And this image also tells us some of the important details of that helical structure. It was generated by a scientist called Rosalind Franklin using a technique called X-ray crystallography. And in this video, I want to demonstrate how the helical structure of DNA can be deduced from an image like this by doing the reverse. I'm going to create an image like this, starting off with an object that has helical structure. In this case, I'm not going to use DNA itself. I'm going to use the filament of a light bulb. And I'm not going to use X-rays. I'm going to use visible light. I'm going to use a red laser. So first of all, X-ray crystallography is a diffraction phenomena. So let's first of all demonstrate diffraction. We're going to shine our laser through two slits. This is a classic experiment, Young's double slit experiment. You may have seen it before, so we'll just very quickly go over it. So you shine a laser through the two slits. And so beyond the slits, you have now uh, two wave fronts. Here I'm representing the peaks of the wave in white and the troughs of the wave in green. And in different regions, those waves will either constructively interfere with each other or destructively interfere with each other. For example, in this position here, because there's a slight difference in travel time from the two slits, you find that the peaks from one wave meet the troughs from the other wave and vice versa. So they cancel each other out. You don't see any light in this region. But in this region, the difference in travel time just so happens to make it that the peaks from one slit meet the peaks from the other slit. They add to each other, they constructively interfere, and you do get light in those regions. So if you were to map out all the points of maximum constructive interference and maximum destructive interference, it would look like this. So if you were to put a screen in front of the two slits, you will see what's called a diffraction pattern where you have several peaks and troughs in brightness. Here's the pattern that I got with my laser. You'll notice that this pattern is very bright in the middle and it very quickly dips away to quite dim spots as you move outwards. If instead of having two slits, you have multiple slits known as a diffraction grating, then the brightness falls off much more slowly. You get a nice even distribution of dots. This is an obvious thing to say, but it becomes important later. Look, if I tilt the diffraction grating, then obviously it tilts the pattern. Now look what happens if I take a second diffraction grating and I put it in front of the first one at 90 degrees to it, we get this grid of dots. And that makes sense really because every dot from the first diffraction grating is now split into several dots by the second diffraction grating. But look what happens if I tilt that second diffraction grating. Look at that. Laser pointers often come with interchangeable tips. And these tips just have different types of diffraction grating in them to produce different patterns of laser light. This tip, for example, I haven't taken it apart. I don't know what kind of diffraction grating or, or gratings are inside. But if I shine a laser through it, then this is the pattern I get. And look, I can twist it to change the pattern. So although I don't know what's inside here, I can deduce it. Because look, the pattern is the same as the pattern I got when I was manually moving two diffraction gratings around. So it must be the same thing going on in here. And that's what X-ray crystallography is all about, really. It's about looking at the pattern you get and then working backwards to figure out what kind of crystal must I be shining my x-rays through to produce this pattern? If you didn't already know the structure of DNA, you might assume looking at this diffraction pattern that DNA has a structure something like two diffraction gratings held at an angle to each other because both of these images have that cross of dots. But DNA doesn't have that structure. So what's going on? This is where it gets interesting. So I smashed an incandescent bulb to reveal the filament inside. And look, when you shine a laser through the filament, you get this pattern and you can just about see that same cross of dots in the middle that we got when we were playing with two diffraction gratings, one in front of the other. And that makes sense because if you look up close at the filament, it's essentially like a spring, isn't it? And the laser has to pass through two sides. The, the first side of the spring that it passes through is like a diffraction grating that's tilted in one direction. And then when it passes out the other side of the spring, it's like it's passing through a diffraction grating that's tilted in the other direction. So it's just like the setup we've got with these two diffraction gratings that are tilted at an angle. 
Look what happens when I stretch and compress the filament. It changes the angle between those two lines of dots. So you can work out from the angle between those lines the pitch of the spring, how tightly coiled it is. And the same is true for DNA. To get this to work, the wavelength of the light you use needs to be roughly of the same order of magnitude as the distance between the coils of the spring. So in the case of DNA, you can't use red laser light. You can't use visible light at all. You have to use X-rays. So they're of the same order of magnitude as the distance between the atoms in DNA, which is why it's called X-ray crystallography. Two ways in which this analogy breaks down that are really interesting. The first is it's x-ray crystallography. So you're dealing with crystals. Who'd have thought you could grow DNA crystals? Turns out if you've got fewer than 100 base pairs, you can actually get these molecules to crystallize. So the image you're seeing here is generated when you shine x-rays through a repeating pattern of helical molecules, whereas we've got a single helix of bulb filament. The other thing is that DNA is a double helix, whereas we've got a single helix in our setup. And you can actually see evidence of the double helix in the image, because it turns out if you've got a double helix like the one in DNA, then you would expect some of the dots to disappear from the image. And that's what's going on here. These missing dots suggest that you have a double helix. Isn't that amazing? So two scientists called Watson and Crick analyzed the image that Rosalind Franklin created and they were able to figure out all this stuff. You can figure out from the angle of the dots, um, the, the ratio between the width of DNA and the pitch of DNA, where the pitch is like the length of a full turn of the helix. It turns out to be about 1.7. So the width of DNA is uh, two nanometers and the length of a full turn is uh, three point four nanometers. And with this information and the fact that DNA is a double helix, Watson and Crick were able to work out the arrangement of the various components of DNA. Essentially, how do these nucleotides fit together? And that's how they figured out the structure of DNA. Absolutely amazing. At this point, a lot of you might be thinking, well, hold on, how does this analogy work at all? Because, well, in your light bulb filament, you've got nice gaps between the spirals for the laser light to pass through. But DNA isn't like that. There aren't any gaps. Like if you look at the space inside a DNA molecule, it's full of these base pairs that reach into the middle. Well, it turns out that these base pairs are pretty much transparent to X-rays. The only thing that X-rays can see is the phosphor molecules in the backbone spirals of DNA. So it still works. By the way, when I was looking at this whole um, crystallizing DNA thing, I found some amazing images and uh, time-lapse footage of DNA crystals growing. Isn't this beautiful? You use the fact that DNA can turn polarized light and you use two polaroid filters at different angles to create this kind of rainbow effect. So you can really see the details of the crystals as they grow. These were made by Lyndon Gledhill. He does amazing things with cameras and microscopes and science. Just really good. I recommend you check out his work. The link is in the description. My channel has been growing quite a bit recently, which is amazing. Like I'm so happy about uh, where the channel is and where it's going. One thing I'm less happy about is all the extra work that comes along with essentially running a legitimate business. I feel like I've got less time to do the actual thing that I enjoy doing, which is making videos, and I want more time to do that. So I've had to really up my productivity game. You know, I've said this before, I'm a, a, a big advocate of online video learning, specifically Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community that offers membership with meaning. There's so much to explore in there. And you know, it's not just passive. It, you'll be doing projects and stuff along the way. And there's this community of like-minded creatives that you can learn from. They've got these productivity courses. I've been uh, working through a few of them. One that I really like is the Productivity Masterclass because it's all about systems. You know, and I love systems. It's not just like productivity and business related stuff. Uh, there's a lot of creativity related stuff like, um, you know, uh, things that you might like, uh, illustration, um, UX, UI design, photography, videography, uh, web development. There's so much stuff on there. One thing I like is that the classes are about an hour long in total and they're broken down into these short videos. You know, I'm really busy so I can just fit them in whenever I've got time. And 
you get access to absolutely everything for $10 a month. And you know, it's a new year, it's 2020. Think about picking up a new skill or maybe dive deeper into something you already love. Because Skillshare are sponsoring this video, you can get two months absolutely free by going to school.sh forward slash Steve Mold 5. The link is also in the description. So check it out today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to hit subscribe and I'll see you next time.